take my human proportion videos very seriously. To prepare for this video, I lifted paintbrushes, experimented with the anabolic effects of illustration markers, drank nothing but tempera paint, and lifted more brushes. Why, you ask? Because my subscribers need a great video on human proportion, and it is way too expensive and awkward to hire a model. Now remember this, every human proportion formula that exists, including the one that I will be giving you today, will not fit every person. Every human is similar, but we are not the same, and each has slight variations in proportion. In order for any formula to be effective, it must be combined with careful observation of the figure that you are drawing. Think of the information that I am giving you today as a very helpful guideline or as an average. Let's get started. Let's get started with the most common unit of measurement at head length. Wait, wait, hold on one sec. Oh, sorry. As I was saying, head lengths are the most common measurement in figure drawing. From antiquity through the Renaissance, artists painted and sculpted figures that were eight to nine head lengths tall. For instance, Michelangelo's David, when measured, is eight head lengths tall. The proportions of the David are idealized and heroic, and different than the proportions of the average person, such as myself. I measured seven and a half head lengths tall. Now I could never get a consistent answer on how tall the human body is in head lengths, so I decided to construct an experiment. I measured a hundred people, fifty males and fifty females. Right now you are seeing only a small sample. I made sure to include various body types to make this study scientific. I was able to learn that a human's proportions in head lengths is directly related with a person's height. The shortest person measured only five and a third head lengths. The tallest was eight and a half head lengths, but the vast majority were very close to 7.5 head lengths. And when I averaged the hundred people together, the result was 7.47 head lengths. Merrill, what the hell is that? And how does this relate to figure drawing? Oh, don't worry. This chart shows you a normal distribution of heights. All that you need to know is that you could use 7.5 head lengths as a fairly accurate measurement 95% of the time. So there it's settled. The average human is 7.5 head lengths tall. Now we have to figure out where our cranium fits on our body. Spaces on our bodies equivalent to one head length are from the top of the armpit to the joint of the elbow, from the bottom of our chin to our nipples, from our nipples to our navel, and the height of our rear end. What'd you think, I was gonna moon you? While females have differences in their anatomy, these measurements will work on them as well. Where do two head lengths fit on the human body? It is two head lengths down the upper leg, and it is also two head lengths down the lower leg. It's two head lengths between the clavicle and the anterior iliatic crest, also known as the bony area that protrudes slightly lower than and on either side of your navel. It's also two heads from the elbow to the tip of the middle finger. It's two heads down the back, not including the neck. Finally, it's two heads across the shoulders. How about three head lengths? It's three head lengths from the top of the head to the belly button. It's also three head lengths from the top of the armpit to the tip of the middle finger. And what about four head lengths? The length of the leg is four head lengths. I have an important suggestion for when we draw the entire body. We note that the average body is seven and a half head lengths. Split up these head lengths into three from the top and four from the bottom, with the extra half head length in the middle of the body. Splitting up the body in this way allows us to identify the landmarks more easily. We know that the height of the leg is four heads, and the nipples and navel are landmarks that can be used from the top down. 
If you don't like using head lengths, there are other useful measurements to know. For instance, did you know that our arm span is usually the same distance as our height? Notice that NBA star Yao Ming has an equal arm span to his 7 foot 5 inch height in the picture on the right. Another suggestion that I have is to remember the belly button rule. This comes from Leonardo da Vinci, who states that if a person's legs are chopped off below the knee, the belly button becomes the center of the body. Also, it is the same distance from the top of the head to the tip of the middle finger as it is from the ground to the belly button. Three quick points about size relationships before we wrap this up. The first one is, on average, the arm is about 25% smaller than the leg. The second one is the hand is the same size as the face. It is also the same size as the foot without the toes. And the head is very similar in size to the foot. Finally, there's about one hand length between the rib cage and the pelvis. In my next video, I will cover the skeletal differences between males and females. You can download the notes to this video by hitting the first link in the video description. One last suggestion before we end the video. Um, don't memorize all of this stuff. What I would do is I would print it out. I'd go to my website, follow the link, print it out, keep it with you when you draw, and don't get a ruler out. Um, you know, I know I gave you a lot of measurements, and this might sound like the opposite uh, information, but this is something that you slowly learn over time, and you're not going to use all of these rules. You're going to have a few favorites, you're going to remember those favorites, and you're going to use those favorites. If you break out a ruler, uh, you know, it's going to look very mechanical. So, you know, be willing to struggle through it at first, it's going to seem foreign, uh, but the good news is I have an entire series coming out uh, that uh, I'm going to be drawing with you. Um, you know, either myself or another model is going to be doing poses and we're going to be drawing for the, from the uh, computer screen. So that's where you're going to be able to apply this information. So, um, you know, I have a few more of these prep videos before we do that. Um, relax, you're in good hands. You know, I, I got this uh, all figured out how you know, I'm going to teach you guys figure drawing. Anyway, I hope that this information was helpful and um, that the next video should be out sometime this week. Thanks for watching. subscribe.